Welcome to Just Minding My Business Radio, where we are moving at the speed of God, learning what we didn't know we didn't know. I'm your host, Ida Crawford, so grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome, welcome to Just Minding My Business Media, LLC. We are so happy that you joined us today. And I am so excited to bring Kira Wisman and Chris Manina in the studio this day. Kira is a dynamic, dedicated operational and finance leadership offering 20 plus years experience in both the private and public sectors. And Chris is the tech savvy CFO and CPA at KWC CPAs with an eye for leveraging technology to elevate your business efficiency. Wow. Welcome, welcome, Kira and Chris. I can't wait to learn more about what you're doing. Thank so you. very happy to be here. Yes. Yeah, so who wants to get this party started? <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about maybe my background and sort of what we're doing on a day to day basis now. You know, I've uh, been in accounting and finance for almost 20 years and, uh, uh, you know, I sort of advi- gravitated towards finding a way to help CEOs understand their business better. You know, as we can advise CEOs and business owners, really help them leverage you know, the best practices in the industry, help them leverage technologies, help them automate processes, help them just run their business better. I look at it like, um, you know, a business can be, uh, maybe the business finance can be like a car. You know, you just want to drive, you want to grab the wheel, you want to punch the gas, but you need a mechanic in there to understand how the engine works. And we're we're just there to help you um, really make sure it's running optimally and that that you just, all you have to do is drive. that's, wow. that's one way I like to think about it. And that and was a, that was a good analogy with the automobile. I remember getting my a new uh, car with all that computer gadgets in it. Uh-huh. And I'm an IT professional and I had to read the book and sit yeah. in the car and play with the stuff. What's this picture mean? So having somebody that can hold your hand mm-hmm. while you navigate finances is very, very huge. Yeah. And I mean, I look at a lot of founders and CEOs and they're not, hey, that's not their focus and it shouldn't uh-uh. be. No. Um, so they should be out there building their business, looking at the strategy, seeing, looking at the forest, not the trees, right? So we're, we're there to get in the weeds, understand how all the pieces are put together and help them build a framework for understanding how it all fits together, but they don't have to be at the detail level like we do. So, so we can help them make the right decisions. I mean, that's really what what I strive to be is is uh, support for strategic decision making. You know, we can provide the right information so you can make the right decision. Absolutely, absolutely. Kara, you want to weigh in on that? I do. You know, I, I couldn't agree with Chris Moore. You know, we have taken what has his traditionally been looked at as just kind of an outsourced accounting function and taken it to a different level. You know, I come from a mixture of public and private accounting. You know, I started out in public accounting and consulting and moved into the private area for many, many years and am now back in the consulting arena. And it's a very rewarding place to be. You know, we, you know, we we have a breadth of experience in a number of different industries where that experience allows us to bring nuances from different clients, different industries to you know, our clients and help them be more efficient. You know, like Chris said, they don't want to be in the weeds. They don't want to worry about their bills being paid. They don't want to worry about whether, you know, what's the, the, the day-to-day work is getting done. So we have kind of developed a tech stack We're using various applications dependent on the client uh, to help them be peace of mind you know we bring them peace of mind and yes. uh it it has it has worked quite well you know we take we don't just produce a set of financial statements and say hey you know here's what you did you know we're able to take that and talk to them about you know here's where maybe you want to go and you know hey if you tweak this you might get there faster we might be able to go in a different direction so um it, it's a pretty exciting place to be i think we have a great team of people who contribute to the pot and you know it's going to be it's it's only up from here 
Yeah, I'm excited because, you know, I think a lot of businesses start out, you know, you don't have a great framework for your finances and understanding what's going on. And you're just, you're just trying to get the data, especially historical data. But yeah. when you can really get that financial maturity and you're starting to not only have a really good understanding of your finances, but also be able to look forward and say, all right, here's where our cash flows are going for the next six to 12 months. You know, I'm going to have this much extra cash to reinvest in the business. Um, here's a few strategic opportunities we can take advantage of. And you become more forward looking. You can do a lot more planning and, you know, forecasting to understand what options there are out for or out there for you. And I, I think that's the exciting part that we love to get involved with. Yes. Yes. And you, both of you are so personable and I'm here to tell you when it comes to my finances, it's a thing where I have to connect with you first. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That, that's a huge part of it. You know, accountants are known for the green shade, you know, <laughs> and, you know, sitting in a corner, you know, punching on a calculator with all loads of paper rolling out in the back. And, you know, that that just really uh, it has its place. But that really isn't true for what we do. You know, building a relationship with you is part of what makes us successful. We need to know not just the numbers. We need to know where you want to go and who you are as a person and even where you were, because it, you know, everybody has a business and wants to grow that business. They want to be the next big thing. And it's, um, you can't get somebody there if we, if you just have your head and a bunch of spreadsheets all the time. So I think that personal touch is another reason why we really do stand out. Yeah. yeah I would say also that, you know, you say you want to, you want to feel comfortable with the person you're talking about. Trust is a big piece of it, but it's mm -hmm. also like, you know, we got to understand you. We got, you know, maybe you're a, not a numbers person. You're a visual person. Maybe we do a lot more dashboards and visualization so you can understand the data, the way um, it works for you. It's our job to really get to know you and understand what works for you so you can interpret and build out that framework the way it makes sense to you too. So, you know, it's, it's sort of a collaboration that, you know, we can understand your business and understand you as well. There, there It's a huge component above and beyond just spending your day in spreadsheets. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I really feel like a lot of my clients have become you know, friends in a sense or a family even, you know, I, I, I speak to them every day, I'm very invested and interested in their success and, you know, their success is ultimately our success. So it's a, it's a really good feeling. And yeah. that's important. What you just said, Kira, Kira, vested. People mm -hmm. need to feel that like from the door, from the very first meeting, that you're going to be vested in their financial success. So I'm glad that you stated that because that's a key element. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you look at a lot of what the accounting does, you know, you have taxes and all these, you know, you need to make sure your bills are paid and all these compliance products. And, you know, all those things need to be done. But what we really like and we get involved with is that that relationship where we can add value to your business. It's not just making sure we're checking all the boxes or we're sitting there trying to understand and strategize and and help you run your business better and and take that next step to just we're not doing all the compliance stuff i mean we are but it's not just that you know right. yeah. yeah we don't that's not where you want to focus you just yeah. want to be the business owner you just want that to be done right. and, you know, and and feel you know confident that it's being done correctly it, it, it is definitely I, I always um tell my team and you know i know chris does the same that you know, if you were working inside this company and you were going to the, to to sit in their offices every day, you know, what would you be talking about and looking for? And while we mm -hmm. serve a variety of clients, you know, we all have more than one client that we deal with. It, it We strive to provide that really intimate, personalized level of service that you might not get somewhere else. Yeah. It's very, it's a very important part of how we are developing our team and who we are and always want to be in the future. Absolutely. So if companies want to work for you, how do they do so? Well, you can reach out to us through our website at kwcadvisors.com. You can find us on LinkedIn or our social media, you know, anyway, you, you, know, you can reach out by email. Uh, but really what, what we're going to come in and do, if you're interested as a business owner, we're going to come in and probably do an initial assessment, right? So mm -hmm. what we're going to do is look at your processes, look at your financial reporting framework, look at, you know, everything, systems, technology, and, and just get an understanding of where you are today, where you probably should be to sort of be more in line with industry best practices and create sort of a roadmap of how to get there, right? So 
Um, a lot of people come to us because they have very manual processes and they want to automate a lot of stuff. Automation and building out technology really saves so much time. That's one thing that's just a really good ROI uh, for small businesses, because if you get that tech piece right, you can get all the systems integrated and working smoothly instead of, you know, we have some clients who still write manual checks and are walking out of the mailbox and things like that <laughs> and put stuff, you know, you can, those days can be gone, you know? Um, so we're going to come in and, and do an assessment with you and, and, help you get to where you want to be. I mean, we'll do that roadmap and figure out the gap analysis and strategize, put together a project plan for what, what pieces you need to put in place and uh, get this business running optimally. Um, yeah. And then once it's running optimally, I'll say the next piece is sort of that FPNA, like financial projections and analysis. So you, mm -hmm. you sort of do that forward looking stuff. Um, so we can build out your budgets and scenario modeling and all the cash flow projections so that so that you can really get a plan for not only where you are today, but where you want to be in the future. Yes. Absolutely. And we hold your hand. Yeah. I mean, we can hold your hand to help, help get there. I, I think that, you know, a lot of people who are in the weeds every day, they're just running their business. They know that they want to grow. They know that they maybe want to add, you know, four locations in the next years, but they don't really know how to get there, what, what financing they might need to get there. And that's where, you know, we come in, we'll do an assessment and we might be able to give you some things that you didn't even know you might need or want. So, you know, we, we come in with a different perspective because sometimes, you, you know, when you have your head down every day in your business, it's, it's really hard to pick your head up and kind of see the bigger picture. So, yeah. That's what's where that assessment yeah. serves a bunch of functions. So what industries do you support? What uh, Where's your expertise in terms of industries? Yeah, we we focus on a handful of different industries and we try to niche down a little bit so that we don't try and spread too far, like a, a mile wide and an inch deep. Right. Um, we focus on uh, professional services firms, consulting firms, things like that, technology companies, as well as uh, nonprofit organizations. Those are our primary. Okay. Um, and we can... We can deviate service industries, service yeah. industries, service for industries part, yeah. for sort of you know medical, yeah. legal, yeah. those okay. sorts of industries. They serve us quite well. We do have but, clients that are outside of that, uh, you know, in, in specific instances where they might be a good fit for what we offer. We can work with that, but that's pretty primarily where we try yeah. to, to. And just while we're on that topic, why is it important to make sure that you select an accountant that is familiar with your industry? Well, there's always going to be a lot of industry specific situations that, um, you know, you want somebody who's got that experience. Mm -hmm. um, they, I know that's really generic to say, uh, but, you know, if like, for instance, for me, for example, I've worked with professional service companies and service based businesses my whole life. But if I go into a heavy manufacturer or retailer, there's all kinds of issues I'm not familiar with, with respect to inventory management, supply chain management, things like that, that, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to be a little bit over my head. On the flip side, you know, where I look at service-based organizations, you know, I can look at a lot of the metrics I'm really familiar in, benchmarking tools to understand their industry. And I understand where your, you know, your operating ratios should be, where your margins should be, because I'm really familiar with that industry. Um, I understand uh, the right KPIs to build out for you because, you know, seeing so many similar type businesses, you see what works, what doesn't work. And mm -hmm how things are run well. Mm -hmm. um, if I only have one retailer and one restaurant and one hotel, you know, it's, it, you get a feel for what a business is. I can, I can pay bills and I can send invoices out, but you know, you don't get that deep understanding of what, what the business industry really is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and that's why we've taken time to, to staff our team with a variety of experiences in, in, in the industry, industry specific experience, you know, where we want to be, you know, we have a, a nonprofit sector of our team that, you know, Chris and I are not an, an integral part of, that's not our specialty, but should somebody mm -hmm. need that, that team focuses on that and they would know the ins and outs of the nonprofit world. You know, I, I can say that even within the service industry, there, there can be a, a specialties, you know, we'll have medical offices that are an insurance-based reimbursement type business model and medical offices that are cash only. So, you know, mm -hmm. even within a service industry, you can get different uh, needs instead. and having people on your team that know that, that specialize in those different niches is important. And we've worked hard to build a team with that, with that type of experience. Yes. And that's important because not one person is going to know it all. Right. right. So that's really important having. Now, let me ask you the next question. When you are bringing these various different talents in, 
do you not only focus on their talents, but also their personable type communication kind of thing? Yeah. Like with you, yeah. I feel comfortable. I feel <laughs> comfortable with you, but somebody on your team, you know, right. may not click. I mean, I think there's some some level of experience that people get over time working with clients and they develop a rapport or get better with that skill set. Um, we do hire some people who are straight out of school and don't have a ton of work experience. And so mm -hmm. you got to train that at that point. You got to spend time working with them, put right. them in situations where they're, you know, in the meeting room with you so you can they can see how it works and get that mm -hmm. exposure and build that up over time. But, you know, I would also say that we're we're passively recruiting at all times so yeah. okay. you know we're always on the lookout for good talent and if if the right person pops up we're always hiring um so we we really do try to look for that complete skill set because it is important i mean people don't just want people don't just want somebody to do the work they want somebody who they can trust and rely on when they they come and have a question at at 10 o'clock at night maybe you know they're worried about something with their business and they want somebody that they can have a conversation with and feel comfortable with so that's it's those skill sets, you know, you, you can't live without those. No, you can't. You know, I think it's important to staff, you, you know, not everybody's going to be a people person. And so like Chris said, you know, we do have newer people who obviously have to develop those skills. We consider it very important to kind of foster the next generation of, of accounting, finance, consulting talent. And that we do have more experienced people who, you know, aren't as comfortable in the spotlight, but have a super solid set of technical skills. Mm -hmm. And that's where they want to be. So we try to meet people where they are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the the people people, you know, will be the client facing people and we can have the, the people people. <laughs> and that's <laughs> so all good. my fancy words today. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and we let the technical people, you know, stay in the background if they want to do that. So, you know, I think there's a place for just about anybody. Yes. You know. And that's important. I like what you said, you know, meet them where they are. Are Everybody's mm -hmm. not, you know, want to be out front. Some people want right. to be in the background doing their thing and just be left alone. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, there are some people who are really introverted and just want to sit at a computer all day and crunch yes. through data. And that we need that work too. So yes. You know. Yes. So that's really good. I'm liking the 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 versatility of what you do as well as how you pick your talent, you yeah. know, how you work with people because that's that's important for not only the customer, but also for the health and harmonious yeah. operation of the company. I mean, I, I think, I think it's interesting. Uh, as I was younger, I always thought the technical skills were really so important and you got to have somebody who really has all the technical, you know, credentials. Right. right. But over time, I realized that it's really about the character of the people who you're mm -hmm. working with and I can teach you the skills. I can't teach you the character. I mean, right. that's so important. If you get a team that you build with the right character, um, and you can build that trust internally with our team. Like we're talking about building trust with the client. You know, we we got to build trust internally as, with our team members too. Yes. If you have that, everything else can work. You know, we can make the technical piece work. You know, we can put people in the right seats, you know, the introverts in the right seat and the extroverts in the right seat. Um, but we just got to focus on that character. That's the most important piece. Yes. Yeah. Now I have a question, um, uh, probably accounting question because most People don't understand the jargon, period. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I've in college, I met plenty of students going to school for accounting, and most of the time they were pulling their hair off. <laughs> <laughs> so you really have to be a special person to pursue this. Now, the ba understanding the basics of cash accounting vs. accrual accounting, what are the differences? So I would say, so I can't unless you want to jump in. No, no, go ahead. I'll, I'll jump sure. in too. Yeah. I mean, cash accounting is really, it's what happened with your cash. I could go look at your bank statement and look at all the withdrawals and look at with all the deposits. And that's just cash accounting. Put that, put all those deposits and withdrawals in a different bucket, right? So it's right. all the cash transactions. But let's say, for example, you sign a $1.2 million contract to provide services for the next year. Mm -hmm. You collect all that money at day one 
do you have $1.2 million of revenue? Not on an accrual basis here because you haven't earned that money. So we're saying that when you talk about accrual basis, really the, the distinction is the money's earned when you do the work and the money is paid when you incur the expense. So like, let's say you also go, um, you get some services from a subcontractor to do some work on, or you get your website built out and they bill you at the end of it. All the work is being done. And if they're going to charge you ten dollars to $15,000 for that, even if they haven't invoiced you and you haven't paid it, you've still incurred that cost. So that's an expense on the accrual basis. So it's less of when the cash is actually trading hands and more on the accrual basis is when the work is being performed and services are being transacted. It rolls into the, the what um, the accounting speak of the matching principle. Yeah. You know, so if using Chris's example, if you have a million dollars in revenue in January, you, you get paid a million dollars, but that you're going to be doing that work for the next 12 months. Mm -hmm. If you just have a million dollars in revenue in your January financial statement, then all these expenses that you're going to be incurring the payroll and whatnot for the next year. And you, you say, Hey, I want to look at February's results. It's going to look like you made no money. You're going to look yeah. at August's result. You're going to look that's like true. you made no money because you put it all back in January. And I think that that's, it, it is, it is confusing. You know, I like yeah. it, it confuses us with some of the more complicated <laughs> concepts that you know, after a while you're sitting, you're thinking, all right, you know, an insurance policy is the same thing. You know that you usually pay an insurance policy up front for your business insurance. And now it's for 12 months. So you don't want to skew your results. I mean, cash is important. It's a very important component of planning, especially if you don't have a lot of it. But, you know, it's it's just trying to give everybody a very even keeled, accurate look of what's happening at, at any given moment in time throughout mm -hmm. a year or, or a period. Okay. Wow. So I'm sure that you probably have these conversations with your customers every day. The, the layman, yeah. <laughs> it has to be in layman terms for us. Yeah, I yes. think so. Yeah. It is It is not a concept that is easy to grasp. You know, for Chris and I, it's, we kind of live in it every day. And I, I think about my personal life, even outside numbers in kind of a, a cruel terms, you know, <laughs> so but, you know, not everybody does. In one of my previous jobs, I every month I dreaded reviewing the financial statements with my boss because I knew we were going to have this repetitive lesson in accrual accounting versus cash accounting. But, you know, that's part of what we do is finding a way to explain that, that it is meaningful for somebody that's not familiar. Wow. This has been interesting and I'm sure it's like way more stuff that we could get into and we will definitely have you back so that we can get into these things. So again, how do people connect with you? Uh, we have a website, kwcadvisors.com. You can find Chris or I at our LinkedIn page with our names. Uh, our firm also has a LinkedIn page, kwccpa. And there is a contact uh, button, I believe, on our website that, yeah. that you can send us an email message through the website. But, you know, reaching out to one of us personally at our email addresses or via LinkedIn is a, is a great way to start. Okay. Wow. Thank you both for your insight and your expertise, because like I said, accounting and financial is, you know, the jargon. It's like a whole nother language. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, that's the point is, is it's our job to know it and not necessarily yours. You got other things to do and you're busy. So, you know, we're here to support you in your business. Um, so you don't have to have that knowledge. Now, one more question. How sure. often do you connect with your clients in order to go over their books and things like that? I would say that, you know, at least on a, with all my clients, I'm probably meeting with them at least once a week, but you know, for a formal structured meeting, but you know, we're there by email or chat, you know, uh, as they need. As needed, yeah. um, and then probably on a monthly basis, we're reviewing a, a full comprehensive set of financial statements with them. So they can talk about, you know, what happened last month, what happening next month and update our projections and things like that. Yeah. And it's up to them. You know, if they don't want to talk to us every week, they don't have to, if they want to chat with us every day, they can do that too. You know, we, we're very flexible with, with, with respect to communication. We understand everybody's different. Okay. Wow. Well, let's do this again uh, in the near future so that we can really, because tax time is quickly mm -hmm. approaching and we're almost in the last quarter. 
of yeah. 2023. Yeah. yeah, so people need to understand if they're not, their projections is not where they need to be now. Yeah. You want to get on top of it. Yeah, I'll help say you out. Near okay. year end is a big time to do cash projections, especially because a lot of businesses, small businesses are cash basis businesses. So you got to you got to do that planning before year end so you can make moves, because as soon as December 31 hits and passes, you can't you can't go back and make changes. Yes. Um, True that. So, True that. so it's important. Yeah. So thank you so much. We appreciate All right. thank you. you. And yeah, thank forward. you. Yes. And looking forward to more collaborations. Absolutely. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Just Minding My Business Radio. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. We hope you enjoyed the show and appreciate you stopping by. Many blessings to you and yours.